Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle. For today's video, I'm going to do, kind of do a planner flip through because as you can see, I have a ton of planners. I'm slightly addicted, but I do use pretty much all of these. So I just wanted to flip through and kind of show you how I plan my life. So this one is probably my favorite one and it's more of my like kind of everyday catch-all planner. This is the Louis Vuitton Desk Agenda. Jessica Ginger cover is what it's called, I think. And I just love this so much. So I guess maybe for some like background, I have been using planners for a long time, ever since I was probably like in high school. And I think in college, I remember having like one that I really liked. But aside from that, it's been really hard for me to find planners to really fit my lifestyle or like what I need them for, my preferences and things like that. So... This year is kind of when I got into more of like building my own planner with planner inserts. So that's why I really like this um, desk agenda cover because I've able to kind of personalize my planner to how I like it. So this is what it looks like when you open it up. I love these pockets here. You can store really whatever you want in there. And I just have a little cover. I have this little dashboard here with a little card from cloth and paper and then these little posters from cloth and paper and then these rings i think i bought them on amazon if you have any questions check the description box but also just ask me and i can let you know where i got things from because i don't really know how much i put down there i love this divider also with the pocket i keep my most used stickers in here the ones i use the most and then i also have this little pouch that has more planner stickers but these I use kind of every day. So the first section is I have my monthly overview and then I have like my weekly view. So this is blank, but because this is next week, but this is how I have my layout. So I like to keep track of the books that I'm reading every day. Um, so I have this little book icon and then I keep track of my Instagram posts. I do have a like bookstagram so that's what I use that for and then I'll just keep track of like different um, things that I want to do throughout the week not necessarily work related like for work I'll just put like work 10 to 2 so I know and then kind of like my to-do list for the day so that's how that is I did try to use this section for keeping track of like my work day and it just wasn't working out these were too small and it just got really crammed so that takes me to the next section i got these daily inserts and i can't really show you them filled out because i have like a lot of these i use these for work so so some of the information on there is kind of confidential but i love these so much these inserts and i think inserts in the last section are from no, these inserts are from Cloth and Paper. The, my monthly inserts are from Infinite Lotus. And then these weekly inserts are also from Infinite Lotus. So I really love these daily trackers. It really helps me keep track of my work tasks because I work on a lot of different projects with like a lot of different teams and things. So I found that blocking off my time really helps. And I have a lot of meetings. So blocking off my time really helps. And then I have a to-do list section here. And then I'll usually write down priorities, like things that need to get done that day in this section. And then at the bottom, I'll just take whatever notes that I need to take. So these have really been a game changer for me and I use these every single day. Next is a chore, kind of like chart calendar thing. Um, it It's a weekly breakdown and I work a lot and I don't enjoy cleaning, but I do enjoy a clean house. This is certain sort of cloth and paper, and it's also been really helpful just to kind of remind me to do these little tasks every day. And I find that when I do it in like small sizes, I don't get as overwhelmed with like cleaning. I don't necessarily enjoy cleaning after like a long day of work, but these really help me stay organized and help me kind of stay on track with just small cleaning every day. And then I normally do bigger stuff on the weekend. So you have your daily chores here and then you can plan out day by day how you want to like clean and do things like that. So this next section is for finances. I was using this to track my expenses, 
back like before I started budgeting and at the beginning of my budgeting journey sometimes I do still track things on here or I'll keep track of like a wish list or like here I have items that are HSA eligible that I use so that's kind of like reference for me when I need to like restock on some of these things I'll look to see what I could put on my HSA account and then I have a list of my subscriptions and when they come out and what card they're being charged to and then I'll keep track of like for instance, like things I need for the house, like bigger expenses, like um, we need to re repair the fence in our backyard, we need a new garage door, things like that. I put them down here, put like a cost estimate, and then I'll try to prioritize so I can just keep my like financial goals in mind. This next section I use for my habit tracker. This also is from Cloth and Paper. And let me go back here these inserts so this notes insert and then these expense trackers okay these expense trackers are from infinite lotus okay so this section i use for my habit tracking so typically what i track is no spend my activity eating healthy reading my my sleep schedule my sleep schedule is so terrible I'm just naturally a night owl and I'll stay awake until like 5 o'clock in the morning and then wake up probably like around 12 maybe, I don't know. But anyway, so I track my kind of sleep schedule to make sure I'm going to bed on time and waking up on time. And then water and I have a mood tracker. And then this last section is just for notes and then there is a little section for pockets back here that I keep kind of like, I use my library card, my passport card, things that I don't necessarily need in my wallet. And that is it for my main sort of planner. This agenda cover doesn't come with um, pen loops, if that's something you're looking for, but I did buy these off of Etsy and they're just like little pen loops that you can kind of attach anywhere you want. So I have one here and one on top because I normally keep like a highlighter and a pen on here. Okay, so that is my everyday planner. And then this planner is also an everyday planner kind of, but it's more travel friendly. This um, agenda cover is not necessarily meant to be like carried with you. They do have a agenda with the three rings and the little snap closure, and that's more travel friendly. This one's kind of meant to stay on your desk. I have taken it with me places like in my purse and it's been fine, but it does kind of take up a lot of room. So that's why I got this small one. And this one's from the Angel Shop. The pen, the cover, and the planner itself are from the Angel Shop. And I just think it's so cute. I love this color and I love the sparkly cover that kind of complements it really well. Just have some little stickers here, a little Hogwarts sticker. I love like planners and things like that, planners and journals, but I feel like I'm not as like talented or creative as like all these perfect planners that you see like on Instagram and stuff. So sometimes that's a little intimidating for me but for this planner itself, I really loved like just being able to kind of be messy with it and kind of test out different styles for my planning. So at the beginning, I have been keeping track of the books I read, the days that I finish them, the name of the book, and then like how many star, the star rating of them, like how good I thought it was. So I'm on, I've read three books already this month and I'm on my fourth one right now, but it's a reread, so I already know it's gonna be five stars. Anyways, so the first few pages are like that lined. And then I have my month breakdown. I don't really know what I'm gonna use this to keep track of. So I have my paydays. My boyfriend had COVID, so I was quarantining for two weeks. Um, I have my off days of work and my paydays on here. And same thing here I put holidays and people's birthdays on here but not too much detail so that's pretty much how all of these monthly overviews are and then I got these little tabs so this will take us to a weekly breakdown 
So I've really been kind of playing around with how I like the setup of this, but I think what I'm going to settle for is a weekly breakdown like this, and then within each day, I'll keep track of any like events I need to keep track of, my reading. So for the reading, I've been just keeping track of the books that I'm reading and then the progress that I have in the book so far. So if you'll see here, I'm reading House of Earth and Blood and I'm 41% through and then I'll just keep track of that each day. And then self-care, I like to keep track of self-care. So that could be like skincare or I don't know if I get a facial, things like that. That's how all of this is breaking down. And then this little section down here is just like weekly tasks or weekly to-dos. And it's like that throughout the rest of the year. Then in the back, I have another habit tracker that is in kind of a monthly view spread. So I keep track of my mood again. This is a lot of the same things I have in the other planner. But um, mood, spend, TV, reading, coffee, water, and cleaning, and then like how many hours I sleep. That's what that's for. And that's what I'll keep doing throughout this section. This section is going to be like highlights, like just things that happen that I want to keep track of like throughout the year. <laughs> so my first highlight is just like all these people in my family that had COVID, which isn't maybe not necessarily a highlight but it did something that happened this month i have my book wish list so a lot of times when i go book shopping which first of all i know this is going to sound crazy i know i have a problem but when i go book shopping sometimes i can't remember which books i own and which books i've just been like really wanting like i know i i don't i don't know if that makes sense like i can't remember like do i have this book or have i just been thinking about this book a lot because i want it so anyways, this is just a book wish list, so I can have that on me. And then this says vision board. I'm just going to put like some pictures here for like a vision board. And then this section back here is for wish lists. So I can kind of keep track of what I want, what my goals are, things like that. And then this cover comes with a little pen loop. So this is a lot of what's in there but it's just kind of a more portable version. Aside from, after the Louis Vuitton planner, this is probably my second favorite planner. I just love how this feels, how this looks. I think it's so pretty. It's um, a Moterm. And this is my planner that I use for work. So I have this little folder here at the front, which I really think is really nice. Um, but so far, all I have in here is like a task card for work-related things. And then um, these dividers I got from Etsy. So this front page, it's just like a kind of a task list. I can't really show much of like how I use these because... Like I said, all of it's kind of like sensitive information, but at the beginning of each week, I write down all of my tasks that I need to get done for the week. And that kind of gives me like a weekly overview of what I need to do. And then when I'm filling out my daily spread, I fill that to-do list in with what's on here. So I'll look at this and be like, okay, what do I need to do today? And then I'll like pick a few that need to get done kind of sooner rather than later second section here is like meeting notes this layout is from cloth and paper as well this looks a little crazy a little messy but these are for meeting notes so you do subject date time priorities sometimes if i don't have priorities i'll just put who attended the meeting and then the note section and a follow-up section down here so i use these a lot and then the next section is project management. So this is for like longer term projects. So you have a due date, who you're working with, content overview, and then different deliverables. You can put the date, task and deliverable and project result. And then on the back of that, you have like a timeline and this says ideation. So you can, I usually just take notes there. So that kind of helps me keep track of different um, for projects that have a lot of different kind of checkpoints in them, I like to use these. And then the back part here is just a note section. So I literally just like scribble things down. 
but that has been really helpful for me to kind of have just a work planner so when i'm going to meetings like i could just grab this and that's really all i need i was trying to put all of this information into my weekly spread in in this planner and it was just too much so that's why i ended up getting this little planner okay next i'm probably gonna go through this kind of quickly because i feel like this is the one that everyone mostly sees on this channel this is my budget planner so this is a happy planner i have gone through this before on here but i'll just go through it really quickly but for the yearly overview i just have my 2020 goals here and then i have a monthly layout and i use this spread for tracking my bills just to make sure I paid all my bills on time and i don't lose track of kind of the due dates for all of those then i have these debt tracker debt payment tracker sheets that i printed out from canva so these are just kind of my debt overview because i am trying to focus on debt this year so i have those in there and then here's where i keep track of social media stats my monthly goals and my important dates and then here is just my youtube content schedule so i can like plan out different videos and then down here i've just been taking notes like 2022 starting balance total debt paid total saved and total no spend days that'll be for january and then this is just my monthly overview where i keep track of my expenses and then i do have a weekly layout spread so i just keep track of youtube videos instagram posts filming editing schedule things like that um what i need to do for the week sometimes i film a video but don't film the intro that same day that normally happens like when i'm fil filming multiple videos a day like there's only so much coffee i can drink so typically the most i'll film in a day is like three videos and that's usually sometimes i'll do like my budget with me cash stepping savings challenge stepping sometimes i film them film those all on the same day because i that's usually like on payday so if that's the case, like I'm not going to drink three cups of coffee just for an intro. So sometimes I'll film the intros afterwards. And if that happens, I just keep notes here on what intros I need to film. Um, any other to-do lists I need to do. Like um, I need to update my description box, things like that. Then in the back of each month, I just have my budget breakdown, which I print out these pages. I have my budget breakdowns and... You know, my monthly wrap-up, cash breakdown, and then a notes page at the end. And then every month is like that. The only other thing that I need to add in here is I think I'm going to add in some saving challenges up here. Just so I'll have the physical copies of that. But that's it for my budget planner. This is a planner that I bought from Cloth & Paper. And I actually originally bought this to be my budget planner, but I didn't like the setup that I had, so I don't know what I'm going to use it for now. I might use it next year as a budget planner, or I was thinking about using this as like a memory planner, but I tried to do that and I already forgot to like keep up with it, but I don't know. But I, these are like, every time I order from Cloth and Paper, I get these little cards, so I like to use them because they're always usually different um, I just made this little dashboard here and put a card on top then I have these post-its from cloth and paper this is a printable that I got from magic meets paper it's a free printable so I just printed out laminated it and hole punched it more post-it notes and then I have quite a few of these little cards from cloth and paper so I have I've been trying to put them on the dividers I just kind of put them as I get them and then for right now I just have these blank pages in them which was these are free printables from hey planner girl and that's all I have in here right now I haven't I made like another little dashboard back here for magic needs paper free printable so I like this one. I do want to use it. I just don't know what I'm going to use it for yet. And then last but not least, this is actually a reading journal. 
So I love seeing everyone's like reading journals, bullet journals. I love all the creativity that people have. I just don't have the patience and kind of like the creativity and talent for that. So I really love this because it is a reading journal that's already kind of like pre-filled out for you. So I got this off of Amazon and this Hannah is actually a content creator. She's like a booktuber. She's on Bookstagram, things like that. And she just kind of created a reading journal. So she has her favorite books and I just kind of highlighted the ones that I've already read. And then there's this layout. It comes with this layout and you keep track of your favorite books. You can keep track of your reading goals, reading stats. So my goal this year is to read 100 books, which is pretty like typical. That's kind of normally what I read. I think this past year I read like 90 something. So I want to read 100 books this year. I want to try to read 10 nonfiction books and I want to read every day <laughs> and only use budgeted book money. So not go crazy with um, spending money on books. And I also want to read 10 classic books. So this spread is for all of my to be read books. So this is gonna sound crazy, I know that, but if you're a reader, you probably understand this, but I buy books faster than I can read them. So I have a lot of books in my library that I have not read yet. And I got 30 books for Christmas. So, you know, it's gonna take me some time to read all those books. So all of these books are books that I wanna read. And these are all books that I actually already own. So that's why I'm really trying not to spend a lot of money on books this year because I have so many that I already own that I need to read. These are just kind of some reading prompts, like if you need help figuring out what you want to read next. So you have like read a book published in the year you were born, read a translated book, things like that, different reading prompts. I filled them out already just so if I need ideas, I can just kind of look at this page. And then throughout the reading journal, there are these like little quote pages that are decorated. And then the majority of the journal is these types of pages where you're just reviewing kind of the books that you read. So you fill out the book details. So the title, author, format, star review, dates that you were reading them, all that kind of like basic information. And then there's just some questions to kind of fill in to reflect on the book. So what was your favorite quote? Where were you when you read this book? What's the most memorable scene? Would you recommend this book and why? And what did you learn from this book? And then there's like this open space here where you're, I typically just write like quotes from the books that I liked. Um, I still have seen some people like put a picture of the book or kind of like do their own little doodle design thing. So that's how the majority of this journal is. I think it has a hundred layouts a hundred of these like little entries which is perfect for me since i that's my goal for the year and then in the back here there are a few extra layouts so favorite author and you just keep track of your favorite author and the favorite books that you've read for me so far all i have is sylvia moreno garcia i love gods of jade and shadow and she also wrote mexican gothic and Velvet Was the Night. Is that what it's called? I think so. I don't know. But those are the three books that I've read so far. And I have the beautiful ones that I need to read. And then Sarah J. Mass, if you haven't heard of Akatar or Crescent City, and Throne of Glass, kind of a big deal. So there's a few pages for that. And then favorite quotes. So you keep track of your favorite quotes. So far, all I have is a quote from the Song of Achilles which is definitely one of my favorite books. Most anticipated book releases. I don't usually keep track of like books that are coming out unless it's like a book in a series that I really like, like House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass. Definitely have that on my radar. And then I watched a book by Chloe and I think that's how I came up with like this list of books that are coming out this year. Books to reread. I'm currently on my first reread of the year, House of Rhythm and Blood by Sarah G. Mass. I really want to reread Call Me By Your Name. So I typically don't reread books that much unless it's in a series and the next one's going to come out, which is this, the case for House of Rhythm and Blood. And then sometimes there are just some books that, I don't know, like I just enjoyed them so much that I just need to read it again. It's like The Alchemist, I've reread that several times. 
Song of Achilles I reread last year and then Call Me By Your Names, another one of those books that was just like so good, so beautiful. And I just loved it so much that I just want to reread it and have that feeling again, you know? Favorite childhood books. So I need to finish kind of filling this out, but I think this is cute, especially because I buy a lot of books for my niece and this kind of helps me think of like, what did I enjoy reading? And let me pass that along to her. I actually used to love the rainbow fish when I was in elementary school and I actually already gave her a copy of that. Books to screen adaptations. So far, all I have down is The Hating Game. I read that in December, then I watched the movie when it came out. Favorite movies. I honestly don't watch a lot of movies, but that's why it's empty. Favorite TV shows. I haven't filled that out yet. I don't watch a lot of TV. But reading playlists. This is Hannah's kind of like recommendations for her playlists. And then music for reading, where you can kind of write down what you like to listen to. I typically listen to songs that don't have words, so like classical music, which is so boring. But I also really like the Bridgerton soundtrack because, you know, they have like a rendition of popular songs. So there's like Thank You Next, Wildest Dream. So they have like those songs from being played by like an orchestra. So I need to fill that out. Where I get my books from... Barnes & Noble, Half Price Books, The Library, Book Depository, and then a local bookshop here. Favorite creators. I typically watch, um, I watch some planning videos, some like booktube videos, and mostly budget YouTube videos. But for booktube, I really like Noelle, Noelle Gallagher, Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte, and Chloe from Books with Chloe. Those are like the three main one and they all talk about different things so noelle talks a lot about like romance and classics because she's in grad school cool so she reads a lot of kind of classics for school but on her free time she reads a lot of romance olivia i get a lot of fantasy recommendations from her and chloe get a lot of kind of manga graphic novel thriller horror recommendations from her and then that is pretty much it so, like I said, this is created by Hannah, who is a content creator at Clockwork Reads. So, I just loved this so much because I could never, see, I could never do that. So, I love that it's already kind of pre-filled out for you. And then, last sort of related thing is I keep all my planner supplies, like my highlighters, pens, scissors, washi tape, in this little pouch I think it's supposed to be a makeup pouch that I got from Target but I always have that with me whenever I'm taking my planners everywhere so that's it for today's video I feel like it's probably going to end up being pretty long because I have so many planners I have a problem I know that but the next video is going to be back to my regular budgeting content it's going to be an end of month wrap up so I'm really excited to see how much I was able to save in this no spend month. But that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.